Let us now discuss one of the Ten Commandments that God had given to His people, the Israelites. And I believe this commandment is very important to us and has a spiritual meaning that we need to understand. The seventh commandment was, Thou shalt not steal. Question. How important are the Ten Commandments of God? The Ten Commandments are enshrined in two tables of stone written with the finger of God. In Exodus 31 verse 18, And he gave unto Moses two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. What is the seventh commandment? And how important is this to the priests, doctors, and teachers of the law, and scribes and Pharisees during the time of Christ? To show zealousness of the religious leaders in enforcing this commandment, the two thieves caught violating it were crucified on the cross with Jesus Christ. Today, how important is this commandment to people? To all religious leaders, it is preached and following it is considered a step to salvation. Governments likewise adopt this commandment to instill peace and order in the country. How did Jesus Christ preach this commandment as it relates to spiritual salvation? Jesus Christ took the moral aspect of this commandment apart from its spiritual significance as distinguished from the religious leader's teaching. He demonstrated this when he did not rebuke the two thieves crucified with him on the cross. In the beginning, the two thieves mock our Lord as the chief priest with the scribes and elders did. We can see that in Matthew 27 verse 41. I quote, The chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He save others himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Likewise, the two thieves ridiculed our Lord. In Matthew 27 verse 44, in King James Bible, I quote, The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. However, nothing was heard from our Lord, but even promised the one on his right, after recognizing him the following. And Jesus said unto him in Luke chapter 23 verse 43, I quote, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. From the acts of Jesus Christ, what did he want to emphasize as regards this commandment? Thou shalt not steal. This is how Jesus expounded the intended message for stealing in John chapter 10 verse 1. And I quote, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. How did Jesus Christ expound the spiritual meaning of door in order to accuse the spiritual thieves and robbers? Jesus Christ revealed He is the spiritual door in John chapter 10 verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. In John 14, 6, Jesus emphasized and saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We repeat, this is Jesus' clarification of spiritual stealing and robbery. John 10, verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief, and a robber. Therefore, anyone who does not truly identify Jesus Christ does not pass through the door. Very clearly, Jesus Christ was speaking in parable. As a result, many people in the eyes of our Lord are the thieves and robbers alluded to by Him. Who would accept that God is speaking in parables since Old Testament times? In Psalms 78 verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. And in Ezekiel 20 verse 49, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, that he not speak parables? Question. 
Did Jesus Christ continue speaking in parables? Precisely. This is what we read in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verse 34. I quote, But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Question. Does it mean only Christ's disciples can comprehend the intended message of God in the Holy Bible? How about the many people reading and believing in the sacred scriptures? Does not God love them also? To answer your question, I would like the word of God in Mark chapter 4 verse 11. I quote, And he, that is Jesus, said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And in verse 12, I continue, That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. What made Jesus Christ say this harsh statement pertaining to people following the religious leaders? It is because he could see spiritual pride in the religious leaders and cause the downfall of Lucifer. And so, Jesus told his listeners in Matthew 15 verse 14, and I quote again, Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the bl blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And because of spiritual blindness, they did not realize that they were the spiritual thieves and robbers in his rebuke. In Matthew 23 verse 8, But be not you called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all you are brethren. Matthew 23 verse 9, Let us continue. And call no man your father unto the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. In Matthew 23 verse 10, Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Have you seen those three words, Rabbi? Is not this title the equivalent of teacher, pastor, or shepherd? Father, is not this label of religious leaders pertains to spiritual matters? Master, does not this term indicate leadership? Because of spiritual blindness, religious leaders have not read how God felt dejected when the people to whom he entrusted his words wanted to have a king or a leader. We can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7. And I quote, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. How fitting, this title solely belonging to God, and now appropriated by modern religious leaders. Psalm 111 verse 9, I quote, He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. They do not only steal the honor and glory of God, but also the souls of their followers. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. All people benefit morally from the letter or literal meaning of the word, in this instance, thou shalt not steal. No wonder governments adopt this commandment to instill peace and order in the land. However, morality ends in the grave. What do religious leaders do not see as the primary purpose of God for this commandment? I believe what the religious leaders do not see, it is the spiritual aspect in following this commandment that pertains to the soul. That is why Paul, who recognized Jesus Christ personally, wrote this misunderstood enforcement of the commandments in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I quote, 
who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Question! How many professing Christians realize the intended meaning of the word that only God can reveal? Many or only a few? In uh, Matthew chapter 22 verse 14, we can find there, and I quote, For many are called, but few are chosen. Lastly, who can understand, believe, and accept the following? Since Old Testament time, in Isaiah 28 verse 9, it says that whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And from the lips of Jesus Christ, in Luke chapter 10 verse 21, I quote, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. As revealed to Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The folly of religious wisdom, but people still wants to follow. In 1 Corinthians 1.19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. In 1 Corinthians 1.20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And in verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Is not this kind of humility that God wants in His chosen? In 1 Corinthians 3.18 Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise.